everybody. Welcome to the Very Vera Show. I'm Vera Stewart and I am so pleased to introduce my special guest tonight, Rebecca Lang from Athens, Georgia. And Rebecca and I met through Virginia Willis, who was on the show back a little bit ago. And she said, you know what? You ought to get Rebecca Lang to come be on the show with you. She's so cute and vivacious. I thought, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, we don't need another star here on the Very Vera <laughs> Show. But Rebecca, I'm so glad that you cleared your schedule to come be with us. Oh, and, um, me too. I'm so you, excited. Tell us a little bit about what's been going on with you and has gone on with you. It's so interesting. Well, I have a fun life. I can't complain. I'm the mother of two. I have a four-year-old and an eight-year-old, so I stay pretty busy there. Yes, you do. But I'm also working on my fifth cookbook. I'm writing a new book on fried chicken. Ooh. And you can tell from the way I talk, I'm a Georgia girl, and I do all Southern food. So we're going to stay in our Southern range today. But I'm really blessed. I love what I do, and I've been working in this industry for about 12 years. So it's since a good she time. Worked, since she was a baby, y'all. Yes, I started when I was four. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have got wonderful things today. Tell us what we're going to be making, and I'm Ooh. so excited to be involved today. I'm so excited, too. We're going to be making one of my favorite recipes, which are cat head biscuits. If you haven't had, they are huge, the size of a cat's head. That's how they got to be that name. And then we're going to take our biscuits, and we're going to crumble them up, and we're going to make one of the most beautiful breakfasts you've ever had. Oh, gosh, that's already that, smelling great. Doesn't that smell good? We're going to do sausage and eggs all in a skillet with our biscuit crumbs, and I serve it straight at the table. I call it breakfast in a skillet. And then we have a really nice salad that can go from brunch to supper time all day long. Oh, wonderful. It's a marinated asparagus that has a vinaigrette with a little molasses and Sounds some blue great. cheese and pecans on top. And then a sweet, sweet, cute little thing that's chef and cucumber sandwiches shaped like stars. So oh, even though great. they have cucumbers and some fancy cheese in it, even kids will eat them. So they're so sweet for tea parties or for That sounds uh, wonderful. Hors well, we've got a lot to do and a lot to look forward to, so let's get started. Well, let's get covered up in some flour. That's okay, always a fun I know, start. I love that. So what we have here is some all some southern self-rising flour. Okay. So here in Augusta, it's easy to find. I'll usually use White Lily or one of the southern brands because that's what you know, you're getting a soft flour. Okay. And so we have some melted butter. Now this is not a light biscuit, as you can tell. I don't do things that are light most of the time, but this is so worth it. We have melted butter, and I use unsalted butter only because when you start with unsalted butter, you can always add salt if you want to at the end. You can That's never right. take it out. This is good old fashioned bacon drippings, which nobody ever, ever, ever needs to throw away, ever. And then we have buttermilk. And this is whole salt. buttermilk. Y'all look in the grocery store for whole buttermilk, light buttermilk. Um, I try not to buy it, honestly, because whole buttermilk tastes so much mm -hmm. better. I'm and it has a long shelf life, too. Oh, it does. It lasts forever. And so we're just going to stir this together. Very lightly. And then once it kind of comes together as a soft dough, we're going to turn it out on your board where your flour is. Whoops. So there you go. That's the fun. She's already messing up. If y'all see somebody who says they've made biscuits and they don't <laughs> look like this, they went and bought those biscuits. So you know that that's something that you somebody to, has to look out for. A little bit on your nose, maybe. And we'll turn these out and I'll let you knead them because okay. you know how to do that. For everybody at home, kneading dough is actually the process of taking yeah, the inside of the dough to the outside and swapping them over. So, and I'll show you, Vera, while you're kneading, I'll show you what I got going over here in the skillet. And if, and if everybody should have a cast iron skillet at home, don't you agree? Absolutely. I mean, I use mine to death. I use mine all the time. Mine actually stays on my stove nearly all the time I use it so well, much. Well, and I love the idea that you're going to actually serve in that as well. Which oh, I yeah. Think it goes from cool. table to oven just as easy. Now, what I have in here is some sausage that I browned off with some garlic and onions. Okay. And in here are already some biscuits that we've already made and crumbled. And I crumbled them. She did. Aren't they the most beautiful <laughs> crumbs you've ever seen? Uh -huh. Now y'all, this is also one way you can eat bacon drippings. When you pick up your skillet and it's so heavy, think how many calories we just burned doing that, you know? Yep. Work it off. All right, now stir this together. Now is that big enough or a little bit bigger? I might do a little bit bigger. If you think it's big enough, add some that more. Is not. Yeah, you can always add more. Just some shredded cheddar cheese, and that's shredded at home. Don't buy the pre-shredded for this one. Well, and you can tell by looking at it. That's awesome. And some tomatoes and a little bit of pepper, and that's it. We're going to stir this together, and we'll end up with a beautiful mixture that we're going to put back in our skillet. And you can make your biscuits ahead of time. You can make your sausage ahead of time. And honestly, if you've got leftover bread that's good bread, and you don't want to make the biscuits, just crumble just that up that. and put it straight in there. All right, well, we're going to keep going on this, and it looks like it's going to be wonderful. Isn't that pretty? So come back and join us after the break, and we will have 
this ready to go in the oven. Hey, welcome back. And if you're just joining us, you've missed the introduction of my special guest, Rebecca Lang from Athens, Georgia. And Rebecca, thank you again for being here. You know, Southern girls wrote the book on cooking, Of right? course we did, and absolutely. You, you, you're on your eighth book. My fifth. Fifth, yes. okay, fifth. Almost, well, we're Well, eight, there. five, however. It's all the same. I'm, I'm hoping that all of these cookbook authors that I'm having on The Very Vera Show are gonna help me get my mindset on the cookbook that I'm trying to put together for Very Vera. But we are got a lot going on here. We're working on a breakfast skillet. Breakfast, breakfast in a skillet. Breakfast a in a skillet. in the skillet. And I love to do this because it's nice to take it straight from the oven to the table in one meal and breakfast is ready. And while we were away, you got all of the, what you had mixed together back in the skillet that you had fried the sausage in. Right, so okay. that also leaves a little bit less dirty dishes at the end of the day. Because no we're doing everything in this skillet. And I took, a, this is a good size spoon for it, and I took this spoon and made some indentions. And these are just making a little place for your eggs to snuggle in. Oh, so cool. I'm gonna let you crack that egg and put you it know, in. And I'll this, do this one. I love to do things that you can do with the children. Oh, I do too. Absolutely. And you have an eight-year-old and a, and a four-year-old. Four so this would be something that they could help mommy with. They do. They love this. And it's nice for us to all be in the kitchen together because growing up, that's what I remember. Oh, absolutely. It's being in the kitchen with my grandmother well, and mom. I'm going to get these biscuits out. Yes, we'll swap with you. Oh. These are our cat head biscuits coming out. And y'all yes. will see how big they are. They are Look. huge. Cat head for sure. Aren't they pretty? And cat heads, Vera, I know you know, unlike other biscuits, they don't get very brown. So I like to call them just light blonde biscuits. Oh, we love light blonde, blonde around here. So these and ended up being so large. In. Yes, and that goes about 30 minutes in the oven. So okay. that's good to do before everybody gets up, put it in the oven, and then you're ready to go when they're up and right. everybody's had some coffee. Oh, but I'm these, so proud of the way those turned don't out. Don't those look so nice? And they're they're almost like a meal and a biscuit. Gosh. Because they're such a big, good size. All right, now on to the asparagus. Some asparagus that's so pretty during the spring and summer. So this is one of the things I think when people think about salad, they like to think about leafy greens. Right. And we kind of tend to stay in that as a little salad rut. But this is something different that I like to do. We're gonna make a vinaigrette and then we're gonna marinate our asparagus in the vinaigrette. Okay. So, uh, I never buy bottled salad dressing ever. If you came to my house on any given day, I don't have any, but I always have olive oil and good vinegars around, and it takes two seconds. So you can always make that easy, easy. So this is just olive oil. All right. I like to use extra virgin. This is a white wine vinegar. Okay. And you can see how fresh and bright this Gosh. is. If you wanted to do red wine vinegar, you could. And I wouldn't do a dark vinegar because you don't want to turn your asparagus Now, dark. how long did you um, blanch the asparagus? They just went about two minutes. Two minutes. And just... it's, I like to use skinny, skinny asparagus. Mm -hmm. And you can use bigger asparagus if you want to, but it ends up cooking a little bit more. Well, and price-wise, of course, you could make this dish any time of the year, but this time of year, the spring and summer, um, it's such good price oh, to, sure. to buy it fresh. And of course, we love to pick up things like this at Fresh Market. Absolutely. And I know we noticed at Fresh Market, they have the most beautiful skinny little ones. They're oh, like yeah. little petite asparagus. I so I have put in a little bit of molasses in here okay. too. Now molasses gives us just a little bit of sweetness in there that's good. And this is kind of a trick I like to do at home. So I have all my vinaigrette ingredients in here. Okay. And to take your whisk, and you're doing almost like your own yes, little blender. Yes, it's like a mixer. And you didn't get it on your shirt. Good for you. Goodness, let's open up. I'm gonna put a little shallot in there. Okay. Now I'm gonna let you transfer our asparagus into this baking dish. Wonderful. And so we're marinating straight inside this vinaigrette that we just made. And so we'll put this in the fridge for a little bit. And the beauty of this then is that we're gonna take the asparagus out later, which we'll do later on in the show, but we'll use this for the dressing afterwards. So oh, okay. it's all in one thing. Okay. We'll pour this over it. Isn't that Ready pretty? Just already, yes. we hadn't even done anything hardly. Now let's pour That's that just on. That's the right color. And I'll let you give it a toss with the tongs. Okay. And you'll see here, I've got for our garnish when we're gonna put the salad together later on, I have some tomatoes that are chopped, pretty red tomatoes. I have some blue cheese, because I love blue cheese. And if you don't love it, you don't have to use it. And then I've got some toasted Georgia pecans. Okay, we're here put we go, she went to the same uh, cutting school that Virginia went to. We just I mean, hang she out and cut like things all the time. She is like a machine with that 
knife. Well, I find when you've I'm got I'm going to be your friend, okay? As long as I'm good with as my knife, As long as you huh? have that knife in your hand. I find when you have a big pile of anything that tends to run away on you, right. if you keep one hand here and one hand here, there's nothing under there that can cut at all that I that can't cut myself. Excellent which point. is always a benefit. <laughs> and you can just run right over it. And then you'll have all this when you're done marinating. You can have all your garnishes ready and all you have to do is plate it up, which we'll show in a little bit. Okay. All right, well we are going to wrap this part up and what are we coming back after the break? What are we doing? We're gonna make the chev and cucumber little sandwiches. That's, that, that's what I was hoping that are shaped like They're stars. so cute and They're so, so cute. yummy. So come back with us. We're gonna get all the rest of this and I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and we'll see you just in a bit. Thank you so much for coming today, you know, just give us your time. You know, a dinner party is always so much fun, and if you should have to leave the table for any reason, try to do it with as little interruption as possible. When you get ready to get up from the table, the gentleman at the table should always stand, acknowledging that the woman is going to leave the table. The other thing that's important is to place your napkin in the chair indicating that you plan to return to the table. Upon return, when you go to sit down, that same gentleman is gonna stand up again acknowledging that a lady has come back to the table. And, you know, during a dinner party, you're always wondering whether or not it's time, if everyone's finished and if it's appropriate to get up. But the way that you know that it's appropriate for you to be able to get up and leave the table is when the hostess puts her napkin on the table, that indicates that the meal is over and you can get up at any time. Welcome back, and if you're just tuning in, I'm with Rebecca Lang from Athens, Georgia, and she and I are both University of Georgia girls. You know, you would think this time of the year I'd kind of lay off of the whole football thing. No, you can but never lay that's off. That's right, you've got to be there. So Georgia girls coming together in the kitchen. And what are we gonna do now, Rebecca? It looks great. We're gonna make these little sandwiches that are chev and cucumber stars. So if you think about the little tea sandwiches we've all grown up with in the right. South, this is kind of a fancy, fun version of it. And speaking of the Bulldogs, you know where my house is, I can hear the Red Coat Band warming up on game days. Really? Yeah, so that's um, what we wake up to. So it's kind of, it's a treat in Athens. Well, and we were talking earlier, um, the sorority house where she was in Athens was two doors down from mine. It was. So if those streets could talk, oh my goodness. Let's hope they don't. That Let's would be hope some they stories. don't. My parents don't need to hear. No. Yeah. Um, so we have some fresh thyme here, okay. so I'm just giving it a little bit of a chop. And you can just, don't worry with the stem so much, when you're pulling the leaves off thyme, don't drive yourself insane and try to strip every stem well, of the leaves. Well, and some of those were actually really, really tender. Oh yeah, and, and they so, taste you fine. Know, they just kind of play into the whole taste. And I love taste. the smell of it, it smells I so do good. I too, I love it. So we have some cream cheese. Okay. We're going to use four ounces, which is just half a block. And then we've got some chev, which is a fancy word for goat cheese. So this tends to, with the cream cheese as well, it needs to be softened. Right. So it tends to come out of the fridge pretty hard to stir. So let it sit out a little bit. Now can and you microwave that? You no. can if you wanted to, to get a little bit softer. But especially with cream cheese, when you start to microwave it, it changed the entire texture of it. So especially if you're baking, I tend to tell people, and you know more about baking than I do, but I, I tend to tell people not to. Right. If you don't have time, yes, microwave it. But um, then we have a little bit of sweet onion. Let's stir this together as I throw goat cheese at you. <laughs> I'm throwing stuff around today. That's right. And you want to get this thyme worked in here a little bit. And when you're shopping for goat cheese, I know Fresh Market has two different versions, probably a lot more than that. But if you want to, make sure you get the log, because you can buy crumbled that is a little bit drier. And we want this to be as creamy as we can get it. Gosh, that's really looking great. And you know, you say that the little tea sandwiches, I did a segment on um, one time on nothing but little tea sandwiches. Fun. And you know, people love to eat that at a party. Oh, I mean, yeah. a lot of times when we're, you know, when we used to be in the catering business, a lot of times the tenderloin would be left over, but all the little tea party sandwiches mm -hmm. would be gone. Well, it's so easy to eat that and keep talking or visiting. Right. And a lot of times, um, especially you'll see this in a minute with this recipe, we have scraps left over from the stars when we cut them out. So I tend to eat probably 10 sandwiches by the time it's all over because I eat all the scraps. Okay, now this is um, 
A Vidalia onion? That's a Vidalia onion. I'm a Vidalia girl. I grew up in the growing region of Vidalia and I've done some work with them and they are excellent growers and they're good, good onions. And it supports our local economy as Georgians. So we all need to kind of be aware Absolutely. of Absolutely, and I've used them quite those a bit Those sweet myself. onions. All right, so we've got our cheese mixture here together. So this is so simple, watch this. If you don't like the stars, you can do hearts if you wanted to do whatever shape you wanted to do. So we have this thin bread. Okay. And that's just a really good bread for tea sandwiches. It comes in rye, it comes in wheat. I love white bread. I know mm -hmm. nobody's supposed to talk about it, but. I know, I love it too. Uh, I like pimento cheese And we're gonna make stars white. out of this? Yes, well, we're gonna do our sandwich first. So here, oh, okay. let me give you a little cheese. I'm ahead you of can the be game. spreading. Okay. And you can spread a little bit on that one too. I gave you a generous portion there. And then we're gonna put our cucumbers. So just a thin layer. Yes, just a little thin layer. And we have our cucumbers already sliced, but what we bought was an English cucumber, which is also called a seedless cucumber. Uh -huh. And you'll see it comes there in the shrink wrap. So that's the way you can kind of tell them apart from other ones. But they have a lot less seeds on the inside, so they end up being less watery when you slice them and put them mm -hmm. in a sandwich. So we have our cucumbers. I'm gonna reach over you and be rude there. Okay. So we're gonna put in about four little cucumbers and then top it with our other bread. Oh, this is so fun. And then cut your star at that point because then you'll end up with it being totally cucumber in every place. Now here's the snacks oh, I was telling you about. Oh, that's the snack. Isn't that good? Oh, yeah. And you can make these, look how pretty that is. That is so great. You can make those a couple of hours in advance if you want to and put them in the fridge and then your party's ready to go. But keep a damp paper towel I over I want to do it. They're so fun. That's something too okay. your kids can do. We're I talking know. about doing stuff. I mean, we're going to do this children. at the next class. Isn't that sweet? And if you wanted to, you can put arugula in there. You can make them as fancy as you want to. God, and you could tint the cream cheese, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cream cheese is such a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, but See, these are the cookies. I'm snacks. so thrifty, I'd be figuring out a way to make a sandwich out of the, <laughs> out of the rest of this. And I okay. like to hold down the cutter hold it down. when you're pulling off these scraps. Okay. And then you can slip it out of there. Isn't that pretty? I but for love summertime and this for spring, idea. Isn't that fun? And you can even just take it, set them around on your platter. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna show them how to make it look pretty because I love that part. So come back with us after the break. I'll try to leave a few of these for, for us to taste later. No problem. But um, huh? we're gonna make everything look pretty and we're gonna talk about Rebecca's cookbook. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Hey, welcome back, and if you didn't realize it yet, you are around the southern table. How's that for a segue? I your love that segue. Cookbook? That's I mean, perfect. This cookbook and all of these recipes, it's just it's just phenomenal. And it really speaks to your southern heritage. Mm, thank you, you know, your grandmother, your mother, all of the things that you grew up around. And you said that's just, it's just ingrained in you. It's just part of who you are. It's just part of who I am. I inherited my grandmother's table who passed away at the age of 100. And so now my children, who we were talking about that are four and eight, grow up around the same table my sweet grandmother grew up at as a child and said the blessing at and did all of her meals. And it just means more to me than any other item uh, in my life. It is fantastic. Well, and so the perfect name for the perfect book. So we're gonna put everything together that we've made today and this asparagus. This is our marinated asparagus salad. And so we've had it in the fridge in the vinaigrette that we made for a little bit and had some shallots on there. So you can see how easy this is. All you do is transfer it to a platter. Any leftover in the bottom of the pan vinaigrette that you may have, just go ahead and put oh, it on top. And it's such a pretty color. And that's so pretty. And then look how pretty this is. We've got our toasted pecans. Oh, I and love then, it. And this gives it a little crunch. It's a nice texture. Mm -hmm. And then we have some fresh tomato that's been chopped. And you know, in the summertime, if you can grow your own tomatoes, oh, there's no perfect. feeling like picking a warm tomato from the sun and eating it while it's still warm. And, and some blue, blue cheese. cheese. Gosh. And I like to kind of do the toppings and the garnishing straight down the middle because I think mm -hmm. it looks so pretty. That is so beautiful. Isn't that you nice? can do this individually on a little salad plate. Oh, sure. As you can well. plate it and just take it out to the table just like that. Uh, and it looks just like the picture in the cookbook. Excellent. That's what we aim to please. Okay. And, 
Isn't this so pretty? This is the breakfast in a skillet. So you can see how I talked about taking it out of the oven, going straight to the table. And the one thing to remember though with cast iron is those of us that are running around like we all are busy, always put a towel or a pot holder here because when you're moving around the kitchen, you're gonna forget that this is not Cool. I mean, that is a great it. idea because that scares me. I have done that before. And, it is, and I've it done is it very before unpleasant. myself. So even at the table, even just put a towel on there if you've got a pretty napkin, tie that on there. And that just serves so beautifully. Doesn't it? And it's uh, when people wake up in your home, if you have guests over for the weekend, and they smell that in the oven, they hardly need We're coffee. all tired of breakfast casserole. We've got something new. That's something new Now, I'm slicing into this cat head biscuit. Isn't that good? And it is so flaky and wonderful. It needs wonderful. its own plate. Look at that. I know. It really does. <laughs> and here's some. I, I had to have you try some very Vera oh. pimento cheese. So we're going to serve a little bit of pimento cheese on that. And then look at the sandwiches. These are the little stars. Aren't they sweet? Uh, I mean, they're just perfect. So, and if you want to do them ahead, Go ahead, like we did them with a damp paper towel over top, and they're just perfect. Anytime people drop by, oh, I that's love perfect it. to have on hand. Well, as you know, as you have seen, the Southern Table comes to life not only with the way that it's displayed, but the history behind all of the different recipes. And I really hope that you'll pick up her cookbook around the Southern Table. You've got another one, Quick Fix. Quick Fix Southern is all quick and easy. Everything's under 30 minutes. And it is, for working mothers, that has turned into huh. kind of the Bible of every single day. Oh my people goodness. love to come home from work, and it's all homemade from scratch. There's no open the can to start with something else. Well, and, and that's, that's the same. I call it honest food. That's the same thing with Around the Southern Table. Everything is from scratch. Thank you so much for uh, being my you. guest today. I've had so I much know fun. you guys cannot wait to try these recipes. They're going to come in really handy. I hope that you will continue to join us on Saturday night at 7. And remember, we say on the very, very show no matter what you do do it in good taste and we are going to taste some good stuff today absolutely so come back with us again next saturday